On this day in history, for December the 1st, on December the 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks, a courageous African-American seamstress, took a stand by remaining seated. This seemingly ordinary act would ignite a spark that fueled the flames of the American civil rights movement. Rosa Parks boarded a Montgomery bus in Alabama, taking a seat in the colored section. As the bus filled, the driver, James F. Blake, demanded that she vacate her seat for a white passenger. Tired of the systemic injustice and segregation, Parks made a decision that would alter the course of history. She refused to give up her seat. Parks' act of civil disobedience led to her arrest, sparking a citywide boycott of the Montgomery bus system by African-American citizens. This boycott, led by a young minister named Martin Luther King Jr., lasted 381 days and it marked a pivotal moment in the fight against racial segregation. The boycott's success not only led to a Supreme Court ruling declaring segregation on public buses unconstitutional, but also catapulted Martin Luther King Jr. into the national spotlight. It demonstrated the power of non-violent protests as a catalyst for social change. On this day in history for December the 2nd. On December the 2nd, 1804, Napoleon Bonaparte, the military genius and political leader of France, was crowned emperor in a grand ceremony held at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. This event marked a significant moment in French history, solidifying Napoleon's rise to power and his establishment of the French Empire. Napoleon's coronation as emperor was not a traditional monarchic ascension, but rather a testament to his own political prowess. During the ceremony, Napoleon famously took the crown from the Pope, Pius VII, and crowned himself, emphasizing his authority and independence from established religious institutions. The Napoleonic era brought about sweeping changes in France and across Europe, as Napoleon implemented a series of reforms known as the Napoleonic Code, aimed at creating a more efficient and uniform legal system. His military conquests reshaped the political landscape, and for a time, he dominated European affairs. Napoleon's reign as emperor was marked by both triumph and challenge, and his legacy continues to be a subject of historical debates and Hollywood interest. The Napoleonic era left an indelible mark on France and Europe, shaping the course of history for years to come. On if you want more, in history for December the 3rd. On this day, December the 3rd in 1968, Elvis Presley uh -huh, made a triumphant return to the music scene with his iconic comeback special. The television special, officially titled Elvis, marked a significant moment in Presley's career, revitalizing his image and reaffirming his status as the king of rock and roll. After several years focused on movie roles and the decline in child success, Elvis was eager to make a comeback in the music industry. The NBC television special, which officially aired on December 3rd, 1968, showcased Presley's exceptional talent and charisma. The show featured a combination of intimate live performances and studio recordings. The comeback special played a crucial role in re-establishing Elvis Presley as a relevant and influential figure in the music industry. It marked the beginning of a new phase in his career, leading to a series of successful live performances in Las Vegas and a renewed recording output. It remains a pivotal moment in the history of rock and roll, demonstrating the enduring talent of an iconic artist and solidifying his place in the hardest musical of its around the world. This day in history for December the 4th, the only English-born Pope ascends to the papal throne. Adrian IV, born as Nicholas Breakspear, began his papacy on December the 4th, 1154, and lasted until his death in 1159. His journey to becoming Pope was marked by intelligence and determination. Before his pontificate, he had served as a canon regular, a monk, and rose through the ecclesiastical ranks. During Adrian IV's papacy, he faced various challenges, including political and territorial disputes. One of the most notable events was his conflict with the Roman Senate, which led to his excommunication of Arnold of Brescia, a political figure advocating for the independence of Rome from papal authority. Adrian IV's papacy also involved diplomatic endeavours, such as establishing alliances with European monarchs and dealing with the ongoing tensions between the papal states and the Holy Roman Empire. Despite the challenges, Adrian IV left an indelible mark as Pope of English origin. His legacy is a testament to the diverse backgrounds of those who have held the highest office in the Catholic Church. If On this day in history for December the 5th, Walt Disney is born. Walt Disney, the creative genius and visionary entrepreneur, was born in Emosa section of Chicago, Illinois, USA on this day. Disney went on to become one of the most iconic figures in the entertainment industry, leaving an indelible mark on the world of animation and theme parks. Walt Disney revolutionized the world of animation with the creation of Mickey Mouse, the first synchronized sound and color cartoon, Steamboat Willie, in 1928. This laid the foundation for his Disney empire to grow. Disney's imagination and ambition led to the opening of Disneyland in 1955, the first ever modern theme park. This marked the beginning of a new era in family entertainment. Disney introduced a plethora of beloved characters such as Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy, creating a cultural legacy that transcends generations. However, Disney's management approach and labor relations have been criticized. There were disputes with the animators in the 1940s, leading to strikes that impacted the company's reputation. Also, Disney faced accusations of harboring anti-Semitic views during his lifetime. Some of his actions and associations fueled these claims, although the extent of his personal beliefs is debated among historians. Subscribe On this day in history for December the 6th. On December the 6th, 1921, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed between representatives of the United Kingdom and the Irish Republic, marking a crucial moment in Irish history. The treaty paved the way for the establishment of the Irish Free State, which later evolved into the modern Republic of Ireland. The treaty emerged from negotiations held in London between October and December 1921, following the Irish 
Irish War of Independence between 1919 and 1921. The treaty proposed the creation of the Irish Free State as a self-governing dominion within the British Commonwealth. It granted Ireland a significant degree of autonomy but retained the British monarch as the head of state. The signing of the treaty led to intense debates and divisions within the Irish political landscape. Supporters, led by figures like Michael Collins and Arthur Griffith, believed it was a step toward Irish independence. Opponents, including Eamon de Valera, argued that it fell short of true independence by maintaining a link to the British crown. The treaty was approved by the Dale Aaron in January 1922, but the divisions over its terms triggered the Irish Civil War between pro-treaty and anti-treaty forces. Despite internal strife, the Irish Free State was formally established on December 6, 1922. It initially comprised 26 counties as opposed to the entire island due to the exclusion of Northern Ireland. On like in history for December the 7th. On December the 7th, 1941, there was the Japanese assault on Pearl Harbor. This surprise military strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy marked a turning point in history, reshaping the course of war and leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of nations. On the morning of December the 7th, 1941, without any prior declaration of war, Japanese forces launched a devastating attack on the US Pacific Fleet Station at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The attack, consisting of coordinated air raids on naval and air assets, resulted in the sinking of several battleships, the destruction of numerous aircraft, and the loss of over 2,400 American lives. The shocking events of that day prompted the United States to officially enter World War II, as President Franklin D. Roosevelt delivered his infamous speech, declaring December 7, 1941, as a date which will live in infamy. The attack galvanized the American people, uniting them in the resolve to defeat the Axis powers and defend the principles of freedom and democracy. The legacy of Pearl Harbor endures a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made during World War II and the importance of remaining vigilant in the pursuit on of peace. On this day in history for December the 8th. On December the 8th, 1980, one of the most iconic figures in the history of music, John Lennon, was tragically shot and killed outside his residence in the Dakota building in New York City. Lennon, a former member of the legendary band The Beatles, was just 40 years old at the time of his death. The assailant, Mark David Chapman, had been loitering around outside the Dakota earlier in the day and even approached Lennon for an autograph on a record album. Later that evening, as Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono returned to their home, Chapman approached and fired five shots at close range, four of which struck Lennon in the back and shoulder. Despite being rushed to the hospital, John Lennon was pronounced dead on arrival. The news of Lennon's untimely death sent shockwaves around the world, leaving fans, friends and fellow musicians in disbelief. The loss of such a creative and influential artist had a profound effect on the music industry and popular culture. In the wake of the tragic event, vigils and memorials were held globally to honour John Lennon's memory. His legacy both as a member of the Beatles and as a solo artist continues to endure, with his music serving as a timeless reminder of his talent and the cultural impact he made during his lifetime. Him. On this day in history for December the 9th, on December the 9th, 1892, Newcastle United was founded. The club's formation resulted from a merger between two local teams, Newcastle East End and Newcastle West End. The merger aimed to create a stronger and more competitive football club in the thriving city of Newcastle upon Tyne. The newly formed club adopted the name Newcastle United, reflecting the unity of the two teams. St. James's Park became the home ground and the iconic black and white striped jersey became the team's colours. From its early years, Newcastle United gained prominence and quickly became a force in English football. Over the decades, the club has had a share of successes and challenges, with memorable moments in domestic and international competitions. Newcastle United has a passionate fan base and a rich history, contributing to the vibrant football culture in the region and beyond. The founding date, December 9th, holds a special place in the hearts of Newcastle United supporters as a celebration of the club's inception and its enduring legacy in the world of football. Though darker times have been endured in recent years with the ownership of Mike Ashley, it looks better for Newcastle United now. If you want more on, on this day in history for the December the 10th. On this day in history, December the 10th, 1901, the first Nobel Prizes were awarded in Stockholm, Sweden. Established by the will of Alfred Nobel, the Swedish inventor of dynamite, the Nobel Prizes were created to honor individuals who've made outstanding contributions to humanity in the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. The first Nobel Prizes in physics were jointly awarded to Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen for his discovery of X-rays. The Nobel Prize in chemistry was awarded to Jacobus Henricus von Hoft for his discovery of the laws of chemical dynamics and osmotic pressure in solutions. Emil von Behring received a Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine for his pioneering work on serum therapy, while the Nobel Prize in literature was awarded to French poet and philosopher Sully Proudhon for the artistic perfection of his poetry works and his profound thought. Lastly, the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Henry Dunant, a Swiss businessman and social activist, and Frederick Passy, a French economist and pacifist. Since 1901, the Nobel Prizes have continued to be awarded annually, recognizing and celebrating individuals and organizations that have made exceptional contributions to humanity and On this day in history for December the 11th. On this day in history, December 11th, 1936, King Edward VIII of the United Kingdom abdicated his throne. His decision to step down from the monarchy was a significant and unprecedented event in British history. Edward VIII's reign was a short-lived one, beginning on January the 20th, 1936, following the death of his father, King George V. However, his relationship with Wallace Simpson, an American socialite who was twice divorced, created a controversial and untenable situation. The British government and the Church of England opposed the King's desire to marry Simpson due to her marital history. Faced with the dilemma of choosing between the throne and marriage to Wallace Simpson, King Edward VIII chose love over duty. In a radio broadcast to the nation on December 11th, 1936, 
2006, he announced his abdication, stating, I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. As a result of his abdication, Edward became the Duke of Windsor, and his younger brother, Albert, Duke of York, ascended to the throne as King George VI. The abdication crisis had a profound impact on the British monarchy and society. On this day, for the 12th of December, on December 12, 1915, the legendary American singer and actor Frank Sinatra was born in Hoboken, New Jersey. Often referred to as Old Blue Eyes, or The Voice, Sinatra had a career that spanned several decades and left an indelible mark on the world of music and entertainment. Sinatra's smooth, distinctive voice and charismatic stage presence made him a cultural icon. He rose to fame in the 1940s as a solo artist after a successful stint with the Harry James and Tommy Dorsey orchestras. Sinatra's career included numerous hit songs such as My Way, Strangers in the Night, and New York, New York. In addition to his musical achievements, Sinatra was a highly successful actor starring in films like From Here to Eternity, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Sinatra's influence extended far beyond entertainment, and he became a key figure in American pop culture. His legacy in Dior's and his impact on the world of music and entertainment remains profound. And now, on this day in history for December the 13th, we commemorate the historic ride of Paul Revere and Wentworth Cheswell in 1774 to warn Portsmouth about the impending British threats during the American Revolutionary War, or the American War of Independence. As tensions between the American colonies and the British Crown escalated, the need for timely communication and strategic warnings became crucial. On the night of December the 13th, 1774, Paul Revere, renowned for his famous ride in April 1775, and Wentworth Cheswell, a respected African-American patriot and town leader, undertook a perilous journey to alert Portsmouth, New Hampshire, about the movements of British forces. Riding through the night, Revere and Cheswell faced the challenges of rough terrain, harsh weather, and the ever-present danger of encountering British patrols. Their mission was to spread the word about the British government's actions and to rally the local militias for preparedness. Cheswell, an influential figure of his own right, was not only a respected community leader but also a talented drummer using his skills to communicate urgent messages. The ride of Revere and Cheswell symbolized the collaborative efforts of individuals from diverse backgrounds coming together for a common cause during a pivotal moment in American history. Please hit history, history for December the 14th. President George W. Bush announces the capture of Saddam Hussein on December the 14th, 2003. The announcement marked a significant milestone in the ongoing conflict in Iraq, which had begun with the US-led invasion in March 2003. In a televised address to the American people, President Bush delivered the news with a sense of triumph and relief. He began his speech by Staten, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Referring to the successful capture of Saddam Hussein by US forces, the former Iraqi dictator had been on the run since the fall of Baghdad in April 2003 and his capture was a crucial moment in the US efforts to stabilize Iraq. Saddam Hussein's capture was the result of a meticulously planned operation involving intelligence gathering and collaboration between US military forces and Iraqi informants. Acting on a tip, American soldiers raised a farmhouse near the town of Tikritz where Saddam was found hiding in a small underground bunker. The operation was swift and without resistance, leading to the capture of one of the world's most wanted men. Though the results were, of course, polarizing, it remains one of the most crucial moments of recent history. History. And if you want more on this day, day in history for December the 15th, on December the 15th in the year 37 AD, one of the most notorious figures in Roman history, Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, more commonly known as Emperor Nero, came into the world. Born in the coastal town of Antium, which is modern-day Anzio in Italy, Nero's birth marked the beginning of a life that would be both celebrated and marred by controversy. Nero ascended to the throne in 54 AD at the age of 16, succeeding his stepfather, the Emperor Claudius. Initially, Nero's reign was marked by a sense of optimism as he implemented various reforms that displayed a passion for the arts. He was known for his interest in music, <laughs> poetry, and theatre, even participating in public performances. However, his artistic pursuits were often criticised by traditionalists, and his extravagant lifestyle raised concerns about financial stability. So, as Nero's rule progressed, political unrest grew. A series of revolts and conspiracy, including the Pisonian Conspiracy in 65 AD, reflected the dissatisfaction among the Roman elite. In 68 AD, facing the imminent threat of being declared a public enemy, Nero took his own life, becoming the first emperor to commit suicide. Please day in history for December the 16th. On December the 16th, 1707, Mount Fuji of Tokyo, Japan erupted for the last time to date. This significant event lasted for several weeks and had a considerable impact on the surrounding areas. The Hoi eruption resulted in the formation of a new crater in the southeast of Mount Fuji. The eruption expelled ash and volcanic debris, affecting the landscape and local communities. The volcanic activity during the Hoi eruption had widespread consequences. This day in history for December the 17th. The animated world was forever changed on this day in 1980 as Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, the first full-length episode of the iconic television series The Simpsons premiered on Fox. Created by cartoonist Matt Groning, The Simpsons quickly became a cultural phenomenon, influencing comedy, satire, and television storytelling for years to come. The episode, also known as The Simpsons Christmas Special, originally aired as the eighth episode of the show's first season. In this heartwarming holiday special, The Simpsons family faced various challenges as they struggle to make ends meet during the Christmas season. Homer fails to receive a Christmas bonus, Marge has to spend all the family's Christmas savings 
Ravens to remove a tattoo, but I got on a dare. And to make matters worse, Bard finds out that his dog, Santa's little helper, was abandoned and is said to be euthanized. As the first episode of The Simpsons to air during the holiday season, Simpsons roasting on an open fire has become a perennial favourite, often included in Christmas television marathons. Over the years, the episode has retained its status as a beloved classic and a reminder of the show's enduring impact on popular culture. And Duff Man in history for December the 18th. On December the 18th, 218 BC, the Battle of Trebia took place during the Second Punic War. This decisive engagement was fought between the forces of the Roman Republic led by Consul Tiberius Sempronius Longus and the Carthaginian army, commanded by the renowned General Hannibal Barca. The Second Punic War was a conflict between Rome and Carthage, primarily led by the brilliant Carthaginian General Hannibal. Hannibal, known for his tactical genius, famously crossed the Alps with his army and invaded Italy, catching the Romans off guard. The Battle of Trebia took place near the Trebia River in northern Italy in the vicinity of present-day Piacenza. The Roman Republic, led by Hannibal, despite being outnumbered, employed a cunning strategy to lure the Romans into battle. He stationed his forces near the cold and fast-flowing Trebia River and intentionally provoked the Romans into attacking. During the battle, Hannibal's forces, including a contingent of hidden troops, encircled and defeated the Roman army. The Battle of Trebia was a significant victory for Hannibal and the Carthaginians, and it was a huge setback for Rome, and it marked the beginning of a series of defeats at the hands of Hannibal during the early stages of the Second Punic War. If you want more, stay in history for December the 19th. On December the 19th, 1997, Titanic, directed and written by James Cameron, was released. Titanic took audiences on a captivating journey back to the ill-fated maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic in 1912. Starring Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack Dawson and Kate Winslet as Rose DeWitt Bocator, the film weaved a timeless love story against the backdrop of one of the most tragic maritime disasters in history. Released to critical acclaim, Titanic went on to become a cultural phenomenon, captivating hearts and breaking box office records worldwide. The film's groundbreaking visual effects, compelling storyline, and an iconic musical score composed by James Horner contributed to its immense success. As we reflect on the state of history, we celebrate the enduring legacy of Titanic, a film that not only became a symbol of love and tragedy, but also left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. 11 Academy Awards, people. Anyway, you want to stay in history for December the 20th. On December the 20th, 1803, the United States formally gained Louisiana following the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase involved the acquisition of approximately 828,000 square miles of territory from France for the sum of $15 million, which amounted to about 4 cents per acre. The land stretched from the Mississippi River in the east to the Rocky Mountains in the west and from the Gulf of Mexico in the south to the Canadian border in the north. The negotiations for the purchase were led by Robert Livingston, the US Minister to France, and James Monroe, who was sent to join Livingston in Paris. The French, led by Napoleon Bonaparte, were motivated to sell the territory due to financial difficulties after the impending threat of a renewed conflict with Britain. The negotiations were swift and the agreement was reached on April the 30th, 1803. The Louisiana Purchase had far-reaching consequences for the United States, providing vast expanses of fertile land for westward expansion and securing control of the crucial Mississippi River. If you would like On this day in history for December the 24th. First. On December the 21st, 1945, General George S. Patton, a prominent military figure known for his leadership during World War II, died. He succumbed to injuries sustained in a car accident in Germany. Patton's death came less than two weeks after the accident, which occurred on December 9th, 1945. The car crash happened near Mannheim, Germany, when Patton's vehicle collided with another army vehicle. Initially, it seemed that Patton had only sustained minor injuries, but he later developed complications and passed away. The official cause of death was attributed to pulmonary edema and congestive heart failure. Patton's death was a significant loss to the United States military, as he had played a crucial role in the Allied victory in Europe during World War II. He was a charismatic and skilled military leader known for his bold and aggressive tactics, and he is still remembered today as one of the most successful and controversial American generals of the war. However, his legacy is somewhat controversial as a result of his sympathies for Nazi soldiers after the Second World War. And if you want more... in history for December the 22nd, Ito Hirobumi becomes Japan's first Prime Minister. Ito Hirobumi was a prominent figure in Japanese history, played a crucial role in the Meiji Restoration and the subsequent modernization of Japan. Hirobumi was a key figure in the Meiji Restoration of 1868, which marked the end of the Tokugawa Shogunate and the restoration of imperial rule in Japan. He played a central role in the political reforms that accompanied this period of rapid modernization. He was also instrumental in drafting the Meiji Constitution, which was promulgated in 1889. Ito also served as Prime Minister on four separate occasions, 85 to 88, 1892 to 1896, 1898 to 1901, and 1903 to 1905. His leadership during these periods was marked by efforts to modernize Japan's political and economic systems. Ito played a role in Japan's expansionist policies, particularly in Korea. And unfortunately, Ito Hirobumi's political career came to a tragic end. In 1909, he was assassinated by a Korean nationalist in Harbin, Manchuria. He is remembered as a statesman who played a pivotal role in the modernization of Japan. And you can Stay play in history for December the 23rd. On December the 23rd, 1815, one of the most beloved novels in English literature, Emma by Jane Austen, was published. This timeless classic set in the Regency era is celebrated for its wit, social commentary, 
Cemetery and the unforgettable character of Emma Woodhouse. Emma follows the story of the eponymous heroine, a young and independent woman with a penchant for matchmaking. The novel explores the complexities of relationships, class distinctions, and the consequences of meddling in the affairs of others. Austin's keen observations and skillful satire are evident throughout the narrative, making Emma a masterpiece of romantic fiction. While not as immediately popular as some of Austin's other works during her lifetime, Emma has since gained the widespread acclaim and is considered a cornerstone of English literature. Its adoring appeal lies in Austin's ability to create characters that resonate with readers across generations. I wish in history for December the 24th. On December the 24th, 1943, President Franklin D. Roosevelt made a historic and pivotal decision that would shape the course of World War II. The FDR appointed General Dwight D. Eisenhower as the Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force in Europe. As the Allied forces were gearing up for a massive invasion of Nazi-occupied Western Europe, known as Operation Overlord or D-Day, Roosevelt recognized the need for a strong and capable leader to oversee the complex and ambitious operation. In a ceremony held in the Oval Office at the White House, Roosevelt announced the appointment of General Eisenhower to this critical position. Dwight D. Eisenhower, who had previously distinguished himself as a military leader in North Africa and Italy, was now tasked with orchestrating one of the largest amphibious invasions in history. The role of Supreme Commander required not only military expertise, but also a diplomatic and organizational skill only Eisenhower had to coordinate the efforts of the diverse Allied forces, including American, British, Canadian, and other Allied troops. Under Eisenhower's command, the D-Day invasion took place on June 6, 1944, marking a turning point in the war. Please hit Honesty in history for December 25th. On December 25th, 1995, the world did farewell to one of the most charismatic and enduring figures in entertainment history, Dean Martin. The iconic singer, actor, and comedian passed away at the age of 78, leaving behind a legacy that spanned several decades and encompassed various forms of entertainment. Dean Martin, who was born Dino Paul Crocetti on June 7th, 1917 in Steubenville, Ohio, rose to fame as part of the legendary rap pack alongside Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. Known for his smooth voice, effortless charm, and laid-back demeanor, Martin enjoyed a successful career in music, film, and television. His musical contributions including hits like That's Amore and Everybody Loves Somebody Sometimes added into the audiences around the world. As a member of the rap pack, Martin became synonymous with the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas, where the group often performed to sold-out crowds. Martin was also well-known for his Christmas songs, and he died on Christmas Day in 1995, so... When history for December the 26th. On December the 26th, 2004, one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history occurred, the Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. The magnitude of 9.1 to 9.3 earthquake struck off the west coast of northern Sumatra, Indonesia, in the early morning hours. The earthquake generated a massive series of tsunamis that affected the coastal regions of several countries bordering the Indian Ocean. The Boxing Day tsunami, as it came to be known, caused widespread devastation and resulted in the loss of hundreds and thousands of lives. The affected countries included Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, India, the Maldives, Somalia, Myanmar, Malaysia, Seychelles, and others. The tsunamis triggered by the earthquake reached heights of up to 100 feet and traveled across the Indian Ocean at incredible speeds. Coastal communities were caught off guard and the immense force of the waves caused catastrophic damage. The aftermath of the disaster led to a massive international humanitarian response. Aid and relief efforts were launched by numerous countries. history for December the 27th. On December the 27th, 1831, the HMS Beagle departed from England on its historic voyage to South America. The mission of the HMS Beagle was not only a crucial exploration but also a scientific endeavor that significantly contributed to our understanding of the natural world. Perhaps the most famous aspect of HMS Beagle's voyage was the presence of a young naturalist named Charles Darwin. Darwin's observation during the journey laid the groundwork for his groundbreaking theory of evolution by natural selection, which he later detailed in his seminal work on the origin of species. The primary purpose of the Beagle's expedition was to conduct a hydrographic surveys to improve navigational charts. The ship's captain, Robert Fitzroy, played a significant role in these efforts, contributing to the development of more accurate charts and maps of the coastlines. Throughout the voyage, the crew, including Darwin, and collected extensive geological, botanical, and zoological specimens. One of the most famous stops of the Beagle's journey was the Galapagos Islands. Darwin's observations of the unique flora and fauna in these islands, such as the diverse species of finches, played a crucial role in the development of his theory of evolution. If you want more on this day in history for December the 28th. On December the 28th, 1065, Westminster Abbey was consecrated in London, England. The consecration marked a significant event in the history of the Abbey, which would go on to become one of the most iconic and historically important religious buildings in the United Kingdom. The construction of Westminster Abbey was initiated by King Edward the Confessor, who began the work around 1045. The Abbey was built in a Romanesque architectural style and was intended to serve as a royal burial church. However, it was not until December 28, 1065 that the Abbey was officially consecrated, signifying its dedication to sacred and religious purposes. The consecration ceremony would have been a grand and elaborate event involving religious rites and rituals performed by clergy and attended by dignitaries and members of the royal court. Westminster Abbey would go on to witness numerous royal ceremonies, including coronations, weddings, and burials making it a central and revered site in British history. Over the centuries, Westminster Abbey underwent various renovations and experiences.
expansions, eventually adopting the Gothic architectural style. Hello, this is on this day in history for December the 29th, on December the 29th, 1890, the Wounded Knee Massacre took place on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, marking a tragic and significant event in American history. The massacre occurred between the Lakota Sioux and the United States Army, and it is often considered the last major confrontation of the Indian Wars. The conflict arose in the context of the Ghost Dance Movement, a spiritual movement among Native American communities that emerged in the late 19th century. The movement spread among various tribes, including the Lakota Sioux, and was perceived by the US government as a potential threat. Tensions escalated, leading to a series of events that culminated in the tragic incident that wounded me. On the morning of December 29th, 1890, the US 7th Cavalry, led by Colonel James W. Forsyth, arrived at a wounded knee creek to disarm the Lakota Sioux, who were camped there. Misunderstandings and a chaotic sequence of events unfolded, resulting in the soldiers opening fire on the Native Americans. The massacre claimed the lives of approximately 150 to 300 Lakota Sioux, including men, women, and children. If you want more, stay in history for December the 30th. On December the 30th, 1922, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or the USSR, was formally established. The creation of the USSR marked the consolidation of several socialist republics in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the subsequent Russian Civil War. The USSR became the world's first constitutionally socialist state and a federal union of multiple socialist republics, each with a degree of autonomy, but ultimately subject to the centralized authority of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the CPSU, and the leadership of the General Secretary, who held significant power. The capital of the USSR was initially Moscow. The Soviet Union played a major role in the international affairs throughout much of the 20th century and was a key participant in World War II, the Cold War, and various global geopolitical events. The Soviet Union continued to exist until its dissolution in 1991, which marked the end of the Cold War. On this day in history for December the 31st. In a historic turn of events on December the 31st, 1999, Russia witnessed a momentous transition of power as Boris Yeltsin, the country's first post-Soviet president, announced his resignation. The resignation marked the end of an era characterized by political and economic upheaval. Boris Yeltsin, who had played a pivotal role in the dissolution of the Soviet Union, faced numerous challenges during his presidency, including economic instability and political turmoil. As health concerns and political pressure mounted, Yeltsin decided to step down, bringing an end to his tumultuous tenor. Vladimir Putin, a former KGB officer, took over as the acting president following Yeltsin's resignation. Putin's ascension to the presidency marked a new chapter in Russian politics. He quickly moved to consolidate power and implement reforms, emphasizing stability and economic recovery. The resignation of Boris Yeltsin and the subsequent rise of Vladimir Putin had a profound impact on Russia's trajectory in the 21st century, setting the stage for the complex geopolitical landscape that would unfold in the years to come. And if you want more Honestly in History content, comment, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.